Hello everyone, I'm Paul McGuire Grimes. Jon Stewart has made a second feature film as a writer-director after leaving The Daily Show with Irresistible. It's now available to rent on on-demand platforms, and I want to talk about it. This is Paul's trip to the movies. Jon Stewart doesn't leave politics behind, though, as the film is set in the real world of Trump defeating Hillary Clinton to become president. But then he spins this into a fictional story. It features Steve Carell as Gary Zimmer, a Democratic strategist looking for his next client. He gathers his team and heads to a small town in Wisconsin after seeing a viral video of a town hall where a former Marine, Jack Hastings, played by Chris Cooper, rightfully stands up for immigrants in his community. Zimmer uh, convinces Hastings to run for mayor of the city. But it's all part of a larger plan for Zimmer, which then gets noticed by his opponent, a Republican strategist played by Rose Byrne. We see early on that Corral's character, Gary Zimmer, arrives in this small Wisconsin town of Deer Lock, and it's fictional, uh, and he's met with a rude awakening that he's no longer in D.C. He's in a city where everyone realizes right away that he's this outsider and there's no Wi-Fi in his motel. Now, part of me bristles, as this is an easy, stereotypical trope, and we see that in the main characters as well. But at the same time, it's not too far removed from some parts of rural Middle America. I've been to many cities like this. Unfortunately, there's not a lot of depth in the film's characters played by Steve Carell and Rose Byrne. I appreciate that Carell isn't playing a caricature like he sometimes resorts to in comedies, but Byrne is left playing the antagonist Fox News type. Chris Cooper's character he is supposed to represent the fact that there's probably a lot of middle ground that's not being represented anymore, as the extreme right and the extreme left tend to get the most attention. He has that rugged look that's perfect for the part. John Stewart's film is less about coming together, per se, but is an exercise on political strategy and the games that both parties play on voters. Stewart is essentially saying that it's these games, the targeted invasion of a community, the lies, and the pointed ads that have played a big part in the divide and polarization of both parties. Part of it feels like it's played for satire until you realize that all of this comes with the negative reality of politics and what it takes to win an election at any level. The money thrown into campaigns and the broken system at hand is unknown to so many people. Stewart takes a pretty straightforward, accessible approach with the film. There are funny moments, but the script itself isn't as biting or as clever as you may think coming from someone as politically savvy as Jon Stewart and his days on The Daily Show. In the end, Stewart wants us to find empathy and compassion across the various boundaries that we put up to protect our own beliefs. I'm giving Irresistible three and a half out of five ticket stubs. If you like my review today, click subscribe on my YouTube channel. I have some other movie reviews, as well as interviews with people like Kevin Bacon and Joseph Gordon-Levitt. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Paul's Movie Trip. And then go to my website, paulstriptothemovies.com for even more reviews. Thank you so much for watching my review of Irresistible. This is Paul's Trip to the Movies.